Today we're going to be doing a lab uh, called an acid-based titration. Titration is a quantitative method that we use in chemistry to determine the concentration of a reactant. A reagent, um, its known concentration is called the titrant. And then uh, it's used to react with a measured volume of another reactant called an analyte. The point where the titrant uh, moles equals that of a analyte's moles. That is what we call um, the equivalency point. The equivalency point is if you would look at a, a titration curve, it's kind of like an S-curve. It flatlines and then all of a sudden it starts making this climb and then of course it, it plateaus out. That point where it is the most steep is called the equivalence point. And that's what we're going to be doing today. In order to do that, um, it's going to take a, a kind of a, a difficult setup in terms of the apparatus. We have lots of equipment that we need to go through today. And that's what the purpose of this video is. Go through all the equipment so you know the names of it and how it all puts together. It is all put together so that um, you're very successful in the actual putting together. Because half the battle is really putting together all the equipment in the right way, in the right order, so that you can actually um, do the titration um, effectively and, and efficiently. So let's take a look at some of the things you're going to be needing. First of all, you're going to need some kind of uh, data logger to keep your, um, your data in. Uh, you can use this portable handheld one. You can also use the one that we hook up to all of the um, computers. You can use a Spark of you. You just hook it up to this USB end, and we have all of the, uh, all the labs online for you so that you can, uh, can read through them. And that's the first thing I would suggest that you do. After you watch this video, I would go ahead and read the lab very, very carefully. Look at the pictures there and match up the pictures with the things that we have in the lab. And, of course, hopefully with this video, you'll be relatively familiar with some of the pieces and parts so that you're successfully putting it together. So let's get started. First thing I would look for is a ring stand. This ring stand has this wide base, and you've, you've used them before in all the other labs, but so you should know what a ring stand is. That goes, the thing that goes on the ring stand is a right angle clamp. The right angle clamp will allow you to be able to put in the drop counter and uh, be able to adjust it relatively easily. So I'm going to put on the, the ring clamp. Right angle uh, um, um, ring, uh, the right angle clamp, right angle clamp hooks to this this uh, uprighter dowel, and then of course it has this another clamp right here. We'll put the little posts for the um, the drop counter. So we'll set that aside. And since we're talking about the drop counter, let's go ahead and do that. This is one of the specialized pieces of equipment that you're going to use here. It's um, uh, it looks kind of looks kind of like a cartoon uh, figure, but you have basically, basically one, two, three uh, round holes, and then there's one square hole. This is what we're going to drip the titrant through, and it's, it's got to be able to go right through the middle of it so it counts it. And then we'll have a pH, a probe, and, then, and of course there's room for other probes as well. So you're going to take this end right here, and then we're going to slide it in the open right angle slot on the right angle clamp, and then you can see where that hole is right there, and that's where, of course, the titrant is going to be dropping through when we use the uh, biuret tube. Now, to put the biuret tube on, we're going to need another clamp. So we've got you know, this right angle clamp, and we also have this biuret clamp. It's kind of a funny looking thing. It has a little, uh, some little fingers on here so we can clamp the biuret uh, on here, and then there's a clamp uh, right here that slides up and down on the ring stand. And so we can set it up here just like this so you can see it. So we have the biuret clamp, we have the ring stand, we have the right angle clamp, we have our drop counter. So already this is it's starting to take shape, take, trying to, uh, um, it's going to take uh, its, its form here in just a second, but it's all, already starting to look like a piece of equipment that we might be able to use. Set off to the side here. Another piece of equipment that we're going to be need, uh, needing is our, our probe, our sensor. Uh, this is a pH sensor. Notice, if you will, here it has, um, it's not like some little dados across here, and then it has this little uh, bulb. And that in that bulb is what will pick up the hydrogen ions and be able to, to make... Um, tell us what the pH is. And the other end of this is what we call an amplifier box, and that's the interface between um, the data logger port or the computer's port to the, to the probe. And it says pH probe on it, so make sure you, it, it, it says that. could also mean a, 
Also, we have another one you can use the chemistry sensor one. It looks just like this, but it's a chemistry sensor, and it has this little uh, specialized, it almost looks like, co uh, like a coax cable. And so you'll need that. That's all linked together. So I'm going to set it off to the side, but I'm going to go ahead and put in this pH probe and in one of those holes. So pH probe, drop counter, all set up like that. The drop counter is set up in the right angle clamp that's clamped onto the ring stand, which also has a biuret clamp. So that's what it, that looks like. Now another piece of equipment we have, and you may have seen these and didn't know what they were, this is a biuret tube, and it's a little unusual. It's kind of counterintuitive. You fill it up at this end, and this end goes up. And it starts at zero here and goes all the way to 50. So like I said, it's a little bit counterintuitive because why would 50 be there? Why wouldn't you have it up here? Because you measure out the titrant. That's what the titrant goes into. Uh, you're going to measure that, that out with a graduated cylinder. It looks like that. You should know what a graduated cylinder is by now. And you measure that out. This isn't used to, to, to measure things out like, like some kind of a solution. This is to measure how much you use of it, and that's going to be key as we get into the software setup. Now, at the business end of the, the Bayeret tube is this thing called a stopcock. Now, some of them are all integrated into the uh, Bayeret tube. This one isn't. That way, if something goes wrong here, you can just change that out and um, just replace it. And inside of here, inside of this uh, business end here, there's a little globe or ball that has a hole in it. Right now, nothing would flow. If there's anything in here, nothing would flow because this is in the off position. When you turn it this way, it's full on. And anything in between, you can, just by turning this little knob, what you can do is you can control the amount of a titrant that's going to go through this biuret um, tube. So what you want to do here, make sure it's off in the stop position, not in a full on because as soon as you fill it up, if it's, uh, if it's wide open, it's just going to drip right on out of there. Actually, it'll flow. It won't drip. Now, any, what you're going to be doing is once you this thing gets started, you're going to determine uh, basically the, the drop rate. And it usually be two to three drops per second. Um, and then we're going to turn that off now. Now, the way this goes on here, I'm going to have to lift this up just a little bit more. So we're going to take the biuret clamp and probably go out of frame here for just a moment or two. And then I'm going to take the biuret clamp and open it up. And then I'm going to take the biuret tube and I'm going to try to, there we go. I want to aim it so that this disposable pipette is going to lay one or two drops right in the middle of that hole. So I'm going to set this up so that it's all the way in and it's over just like that so that when I adjust this, the stopcock, it's only going to allow two to three drops per second through the hole that's in the, uh, the the drop counter. So really, that's the basics. So we have the ring stand, we have the drop counter, we have the pH probe, we have the stopcock and the biuret tube, we have the biuret clamp up here. So this is the basics. And you're going to be using this end and the end of the so this is the, the business end or, or the receiving end of the drop counter. This is the pH. And what you're going to do with that is you're going to put it inside the ports. Here are those ports that are on the computer. One's going to go in there, and another one's going to go in there. So you'll have your all your probes set up ready to go. Whether you use this style or the portable handheld, which has its ports on the outside, you just got to make sure that those uh, ports are put in there. So there's a couple other things you also have to uh, take care of here uh, today as well. You're also going to, um, because you're going to drop at a time, and if you were to try to, to, to determine the pH without stirring it, it would take some time for it to, dis to diffuse through your solution. So you're going to need one of these. What you're going to need this for is you're going to need this to put the end light in here. You're going to measure out 100 uh, mLs of either one molar of hydrogen um, uh, chloride acid, hydrochloric acid, or one mL of acetic acid. 
and you're going to determine which one is the stronger of the two acids based on um, uh, the, the, the titrant and how many drops and how many volume does it take before it gets the equivalency point. So you're going to put 100 mL in this container. Try not to get one that's too tall. Like if you get one like this that's too tall, I would suggest you get a 250 mL beaker. That works the best. Um, this one is for 600 mLs. That's just too tall. Make sure you get a shorter one because you're only going to need to put in here about 100 mLs. And probably the most that you're going to use up is uh, maybe 60 to 80 mLs from the titron. So you're going to put that in there. Now, it's going to look like this. So you have this thing set up. This is a spin. Um, uh, this thing, that thing right here uh, allows us to, to spin a magnet. So this particular piece of equipment is going to be necessary. So it doesn't, it's not a hot plate, it's a spin plate. So that there's a huge difference. Spin plate, hot plate. Some, sometimes you're both of them. But it looks like this. You turn this on and off, and you determine the amount of spin. You don't want a heavy vortex. So you're going to put this on here. And if for some reason you don't have one of these, these are mini spinners or stirrers, and they go on the end of the uh, pH probe. But if you don't have one of those, just put a magnet in the bottom of that, and then you spin it. And then what happens is you're going to set all of this. We're going to turn this around like this. And what you're going to do is you're going to set this whole apparatus. Inside of here, just like that. So now what I have, I'm going to lift this up just a little bit. What I currently have right here is I have my stir plate right here. I have my 25 ml beaker here. I have my drop counter here with the pH probe and my ring stand. And then I'm going to put this biurette clamp in place by swinging the arm over so that now it's right over top just a little bit, one or two millimeters above um, the, uh, the hole in which it'll drop through. So let's take a look here at the bottom. You can see now that I've got set up, so the disposable pipette is right over the hole on the drop counter. Have the pH probe located just off to the side towards, towards the operator. And we've got the right angle, the right angle clamp all clamped down. We also have the stopcock straight across so it's off. The biurette tube so it's faced towards the operator so we know how much we uh, need to add uh, or when to stop it. And then the biurette clamp is in place. So that's really the setup. So make sure you study this setup really well. There's a drawing on your lab. Also I have one set up in the, uh, in the front so you can see what it looks like before you start. Because there's nothing worse than trying to, to um, to use this lab when you have one molar um, NaOH and one molar um, hydrochloric acid, it's, it's just not pleasant because everything it's going to touch is going to stain, kind of turn it kind of salty. So just uh, real quick, one more time. The analyte is going to be put in here, and that's the acids that you're going to test. So the hydrochloric or acetic acid is going to go in here, 100 mLs. Now what you're going to do with this, on the other hand, the biurette, on the biurette tube right here, what you're going to do is put the NaOH. You're going to put 50 mLs in that, and that's near the top. So 50 mLs of sodium hydroxide is going to be the titrant. And then right down here, right here in the beaker, that's going to be the analyte. And that's going to be the acid. So you're going to be dropping NaOH through this um, stopcock. And by adjusting the, the flow with uh, the stopcock, right like that, into the analyte, which is an acid. Acid is going to go in there. Either a, um, um, either hydrochloric or acetic acid will be in there. And sodium hydroxide is going to be in this biurette tube. So please make sure you understand that. You can't get those backwards. Otherwise, you're going to be doing this a lot. The setup is relatively, I would say, moderately difficult. But actually, the lab is relatively uh, simple because we're just dropping, drop by drop, sodium hydroxide from the biurette tube into um, the beaker, the 250 mL beaker. And we'll determine how much 
of the sodium hydroxide um, will, um, the volume it takes to, to basically make this uh, the same amount of moles as that. So we're going to be measuring how much of the sodium hydroxide is used up. So I hope that's helped. Again, I would suggest if you get a little confused with that, go back to the instructions, read the instructions. They're very well written. I didn't write them, by the way. Uh, so they're well written. I know that for a fact. And, of course, check inside your, your instructions. There's some very simple, good uh, diagrams with a list of materials that are in it. So I, I wish you well, and don't forget to ask us if you need some help. Thanks.